fourth graders, we all know that the hardest and most challenging part of any concept in math is to apply the concepts to word problems. But for this particular video review, I just want to make sure that you can do the basic operations and algorithms to solve problems involving fractions and mixed numbers. So let's look over here. Uh, I have four examples of how we're going to be able to change mixed numbers into improper fractions or fractions greater than one, number one and number two, and then taking fractions greater than one or improper fractions and convert them back into mixed numbers. All right, so let's try this one. What is the improper fraction or fraction greater than one that three and four ninths could become? Hopefully you were able to come up with the correct answer by multiplying the whole number by the denominator because the denominator would have been the numerator to make a one, nine ninths. So we'll just use that. Three times nine is 27 plus four is 31 ninths. How are you doing? Now these will be a little harder. What would be the mixed number that we could turn 28 ninths into? One way you could have done it is to set up the division problem of 28 divided by 9 and then done it as a long division problem. Put the 3 here and then realize that 3 times 9 is 27 with the remainder of 1. But in this case, our remainder would be reported as a fraction, which is 1 as the numerator and 9 as the denominator. Try this one. Were you able to quickly see that this 35 sevenths is equivalent to the whole number 5 with no fractional part? Let's move over here. We're going to apply our ability to rename our mixed number to be able to allow us to subtract if necessary. Try this one. Were you able to quickly rename 12 and 1 third? to 11 and how many thirds? I hope you realized we get our numerator by adding our denominator to our numerator of the fractional piece making it 4 thirds. And now we can easily subtract 6 and 2 thirds and our answer would be 2 thirds here. 11 minus 6 is 5. Our answer was 5 and 2 thirds. Did you get that? Let's try this one. Did you realize that on this one you did not need to regroup or to rename this mixed number here? You can subtract 3 sixths from 4 sixths. No renaming was necessary. How about this one? Well, were you able to rename the 10 and 5 eighths easily? It would have been 9. And what is 5 plus 8? 13. Good. 9 and 13 eighths. Hopefully you did that easily. Minus 3 and 7 eighths. And our answer would be 6 eighths here. And 9 minus 3 is 6. Hopefully you came up with the answer of 6 and 6 eighths. Let's move over here quickly. I didn't even use the parentheses to put these together. Remember the two properties of addition are associative property which would require us to um, put the parentheses around two add-ins because you can only add two add-ins at a time and the commutative property which allows us to change the order of the add-ins in addition without changing the sum. Did you get the answer of 24 and 3 fourths? Were you able to do it mentally? I just used the associative property to group these two and figure out the sum of 2 and 3 fourths and 21 and 1 fourth because I knew that 3 fourths and 1 fourth makes another whole. So 21 plus 2 plus 1 is 24 and 3 fourths added to that makes the final sum. Try this one. I grouped, as I hope you did, these two add-ins together again looking for the fractional parts that would create one whole. How about the last one? This one was super easy, wasn't it? 
because if you did the commutative property and you wrote these two together, 15 and 7 tenths, plus 4 and 3 tenths, and put the 6 at the end, because remember we're allowed to do that, and then associate these two together, you realize that together 15 and 4 is 19, but these make the next whole number, so 19 plus 1 is 20, plus 6, so this one was, I think, the easiest to do of all three. I hope this practice helped and that you were able to be very successful with your answers.